<laughs> Hallelujah. My case is different. Why? Because I'm a redeemer of the Lord and as covenant child, what afflicts others is a bunch of correlations. Hallelujah. You are specially welcome to tonight's service. And I'd like you to know that your coming tonight is a special convocation for your own celebration. Your coming tonight is a special convocation for your own celebration. How do I mean? Convocation is when people that are to be released into a new world convey, I mean, conveys. And we convey every Wednesday like this for someone to experience his own celebration. So tonight, tonight is an holy convocation for your own celebration. Every convocation, there's always a prize given. In every convocation, there's a prize given. That is the best student. The best candidate. But by all means, everybody goes home with something. Tonight, you are going home with something. Amen. With a good news. Amen. There is no convocant that does not return with something. So, for you to be praying tonight, you are returning with a something tangible from the Lord. Amen. But please expect it. Glory to God. In a midweek service, we've been talking about exploring the secret of supernatural breakthrough. Exploring the secret of supernatural breakthrough. Breakthrough is your right in Christ. Say breakthrough. It's my right in Christ. Not just breakthrough, but supernatural breakthrough. That is the breakthrough that cannot be explained. The breakthrough that cannot be understood. The breakthrough that is beyond human understanding. And to explore is to be able to, you know, analyze and look into the secret that can bring about it. And mind you, the beauty of this kind of breakthrough is that it is from God and whatever the Lord doeth shall be forever. So tonight, expect to return with something that will be placed in your hand that will make you a major financier in this generation. I can hear you, amen. There's a way God will give you a secret that even your children, great grandchildren unborn, will still be eating from it. I'm telling you. There is a way God will give you a secret that one discovery, one discovery makes your great, great, great grandchildren to be eating from the fruits. It's a matter of signing a contract. That for every percentage, imagine Coca-Cola. There's a story, maybe I'll talk about it later. That there's a percentage, imagine you getting a percentage from Coca-Cola. They drink Coca-Cola globally. Imagine you alone collecting percentage from everyone, even if it's just five percent, I mean, if it's just five cents. Globally, you don't need to work in terms of hard work. That secret will be revealed to you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, tonight we'll be focusing on the place of divine endowment. The place of divine endowment. I'd like you to know that everyone created, whether a believer or non-believer, is an extension of God's creation. No person can create human being except God. God is the creator of all. And to every creator or to every product, there's a trademark. There's a logo. Everyone that God created has God's deposits meant to continue the creation. When God made Adam, he placed something in Adam that, and that initiated procreation. So I like us to know. That's why, if you look at it, even unbelievers are making it. True of us. Fine. Which means not until you are born again. That's when you make it. But you see, if you're not born again, your making it is not guaranteed. And if you don't make it, it is not, I mean, it cannot be lasting. It does not have a future. 
And that's why in the world, you see people that engages their mind to employ believers, even though they are unbelievers. But tonight, focusing on the place of divine endowment as a believer. Divine endowment. All heaven's products are God's products. And um, all God's products carries God's grace. Everyone that God created, he placed something in him to continue the creation. So, no one here is inferior to anybody. I was talking to who visited today. I said, tell yourself, I'm not inferior to anybody. Nobody that looks richer than you today is richer than your God. So, if everybody looks down on you, that what are you wearing? Remember who, who created you. So, there's no basis of anybody using any car to harass you. They may drive car today. You carry something that will make them buy their cars. It's a matter of discovery of divine endowment. Divine endowment. I like us know tonight that every divine endowment is for a special assignment. Every divine endowment is for a special assignment. No one is a creation, creation of a mistake. You are not a mistake. You are not a destitute. You are a child of destiny. No matter how you came, you came from somewhere. No matter where you came, you came from somewhere. And the creator of all is God. So, when you were being created, he placed a, he placed a seed in you to carry out the assignment. 1 John 3, verse 8. The Bible says that he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So to every assignment, there's an endowment. The assignment is to destroy the works of the devil. And what was the endowment? Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good? Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. To every endowment, there's an assignment. So God actually engraced him, endowed him with that gift or with those gifts to carry out an, an assignment. May you discover yours tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who refuse to discover divine endowment end up in asylum. Not asylum, uh, uh, what do you call it? Permits, not permits. I'm using English now. So don't think that, ah, pastor, are you abusing us? Mm -mm. I'm not abusing you. Asylum, not in asylum of um, asylum seeker, but asylum of life. Do we understand? I don't mean uh, asylum paper. As there are people that have asylum that are richer than do that have permits. True of us. Uh, so forget that one. It's not, it's not the permits you have. It's your life you live in. But in the real sense, there, until you discover divine assignment, you may end up as in asylum. A place that you don't really want to be. And that's why i like you to know there's something in you there's something in you that is so unique that will make you a celebrity in this generation. It's not a prayer. It's already there. Now, God will not create that thing. At creation, he planted that thing. At creation, he initiated it. At creation, he placed it there. Sir, you know what? Before I became a pastor, long before I became a pastor, the things I'm seeing as a pastor have been happening. Even in school days, before I became a pastor, I thought... There's one lady they called, one lady like that, Miss of our school, when we were doing beauty pageant competition. She had, what they call it, um, appendicitis. She was due for an operation. And I just prayed for her and it disappeared. No more operation, cancelled. It, it, it has been manifesting long before, long before. But you must be able to understand what you have. Otherwise, you look like someone who has nothing. No one that God created without something. Mm -mm. No matter what. 
Even though you were born inside the pit. That's why look at Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was born in a manger. So where you were born is not important. What you can understand is what's important. Every divine assignment is practically an earthly investment. You were being created with an endowment for an earthly investment. That is God's. Think about it. For God so loved the world that he gave. He saw Jesus to harvest the world. He invested Jesus. How would Christianity, how would, how would we have known that there's restoration to, to old Eden? If not because God sent Jesus. So you were sent for an assignment to generate a change. But you must locate that divine endowment. Hence, yes, every endowment is meant for our profiting. Because it is not meant there for decoration. It is meant there to trade with. To work on it. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. The Bible says that the, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with thou. You are to profit with what you carry. You are not to watch with it. That's why everyone is gifted in some special ways. Please stop trying to do what you're not sent to do. Don't try to sing because your friend is singing. Maybe that may not be your gift. In some gathering, when you say, let's lead praise worship, you may get angry that, ah, what is this? You say, oh, oh where is it, our Lord? Say, ah! And that person, I must sing by force. Must you sing? That's what the Bible make a provision. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Ooh, God has created a category for such people. You don't need to sing. Just ooh, as you shout, God understand the voice he gave you. That is not meant for singing. You don't go to choir and say, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Angels, you say, shut up. <laughs> don't spoil our gifts. So, locate, don't do it because your friend is doing it. Locate what you carry. Everyone is gifted with some spe in some special ways. Matthew 25, verse 15. And unto one, he gave five talents. To another, two talents. To another, one. To every man according to his several ability. Don't go beyond your ability. Don't go lower than your ability. You don't need to struggle. For example now, there are some people, they don't struggle to sing. Let them eat coconut oil. Let them drink ice cream. Let them take anything. Wake them up in the night, they will still sing. But there are some people, if they don't take hot water, Orobo <laughs> and all kinds of stuffs. If they try to sing, frog will be better than them. <laughs> Why? Because they are trying to make it happen, which is not bad. But there are some they are endowed naturally, as a naturally, it is a natural endowment from the Lord. So look at yours. Look at Michael Jordan. It's a grace of height. That enhances his, his, I mean, I mean, his career. You can't be short and say, I want to play basketball. It's you, it's you they will turn to ball. Because you are so short, you and ball, you are, so, you are at the same level. So you don't say, because if you want to dunk, you, you, they will use your leg to push you away. So you need to understand what you carry. Don't try to compete with someone that is tall to play basketball. Otherwise, you will never, your hand will never touch the ball. <laughs> so what am I saying? Everyone that God created has something inside him. Say amen. amen. Say, I carry, I carry something. That is not common. common. You're not saying with understanding. Say, I carry a gifting. That is not common. And it will show forth very soon. Amen. amen. Now look at it. John Ruskin said, The weakest among us has a gift. However, seemingly trivial which is peculiar to him and which worthily used will be a gift also to his race. What does it mean? The wickedest person among us has a gift. 
that is, they call you weak. You carry something that they don't know you is strong. The weakest among us has a gift. However, it might look so trivial, that is, it might look so small to you. It might look so small to you. But when it is worthily used, it becomes a gift to your generation. Look at Nick. Nick, if Nick were to be created in Nigeria, forget it, he will be begging. Because of the mentality that no hand, no leg, next day, beg. But Nick is a celebrity today that lectures those who have lands and legs. Nick is someone today that for you to ap apply, to invite him, you pay money. And in terms of, he's no more than any person. But you see, the situation of his life has brought up a the celebration of life. There's no one that God created as a mistake. No matter your condition. No matter your situation. That man's story always teaches me a lesson. No hand, no leg. But yet, he's teaching those who have, he's, he's lecturing those who have hands and legs. Glory to God. So, never tell yourself. Look at Job, verse, Job 12, verse 3. He said, I am not inferior to any man. You are not inferior to anybody. Say, I'm not inferior to any man. He said, but I have understanding as, we, as, as well as you. So don't think, I'm not inferior to you. Don't let anybody use English to harass you because you don't understand English. It doesn't matter. It's not English they used to make it in life. Don't allow people to say that because you don't understand English, you can't make it. Don't allow people to think that because you are short, you can't make it. Because you are too fat, nobody will marry you. Who told you? Some people are looking for fat people. Tell yourself, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. There's something in me meant for me. No matter the condition. Because you see, it might sound funny, but in a way, some, plus, some comments passed over some people has made them to be in a cage. Look at you. Who ever marry you? See your size. As big as the Kozuna. They won't abuse you. You may laugh, but when you get to your corner, you say, ah, it's true. Don't mind them. It's a lie. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. There's an endowment in you that the world will soon celebrate. So, tell yourself, I carry the grace of God. I didn't make myself. Therefore, I cannot be molested by man. Man didn't make you, so man can't determine you. Glory to God. So, there's something in every believer that makes him or her unique. There's something in every believer. That's the beauty of salvation. Redemption gives us a better understanding of our creation. <laughs> Redemption gives us a better understanding of our creation. How and why? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is of the same God, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now, the Bible says that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It doesn't enter the world out of man. What God has prepared for those that love him. But the spirit of God revealed them to us. He revealed them to us. So the spirit of God helps us understand what you carry. Now think about it. Some, have multi, some are multi talented. And that is the beginning of confusion of some. For example, so many years ago, I was in between. I like playing soccer. I like playing four, playing eight. At the same time, I know how to do drama in a way, little. At the same way, I could sing, small, small. In the same way, I like doing competition. So you're like, okay, which one? At the same time, want to beat me, I mean, beat hospital, beat whatever. So you get confused, which one? That is where the spirit of God comes in. To tell you, no, this is minor, this is major. To tell you, no, focus on this and not on that. An unbeliever will just do try and error. Eighty times a day, let me call here. Just do try and error. But in the real sense, by having the spirit of God, you have direction. That's what the Bible says. See, I mean, call unto me, and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Tonight, the Lord will reveal it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So say I'm unique. Say I'm not common. 
So if you understand you're not common, no common man can harass you. If you know you're not common, sir, you may be trekking today, you will soon have an estate of cars. Yeah. Have that mentality. So don't allow anybody to harass you. If rain starts now and somebody passes and splash water on you, say praise the Lord. It's part of the story that will show the glory. So don't allow you, you know, if you go to some locations, you drive past, you say, pa, put water on you. They don't even park to say sorry. You say, oh, God, in my life, in my life. Don't say in my life. Say, Father, I thank you because I have a story to tell. Glory to God. Amen. But how must we get this talent discovered? We must look inward to identify our talents. Remember, there was a message I was prepared to preach and I mentioned, I said, before you look upward, look inward. Before you say, oh God, oh God, say, oh myself, oh myself. Look inward. God will not create you again. He has created you. So why are you looking up to God? Look inward first. In what way? Luke 15 verse 7. Luke 15 verse 7. The Bible says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find. Seek diligently inward. How? Number one, ask God. Lord, what have you placed in me that I should major my life on? What have you placed in me that I should major my life on? Many are majoring on the minor. That's why their life is minus. When you major on the minor of your life, you end up as minus. Because there's no R. Minus can turn to positive. I say minus times minus. So you need to know, am I majoring on the major? Or majoring on the minor? Think about it. There's something that dominates your passion. There's something that dominates your mind. I'll soon get there in just a few seconds, a few minutes. So number one, make inquiry, asking God, Lord, what have you placed in me? Because you see, some may not be that sensitive to know what they carry. And if you're not sensitive, you may not even know what it is. Number two, understand that what you have passion for is a pointer to God's plantation inside you. What you have passion for is a pointer to God's plantation. What God has planted inside you. Passion is one way to understand, to discover God's seed inside you. Whatever you have passion for is a pointer to God's vision for your life. Simply because your passion is a pointer to your purpose of creation. Think about it. Passion is not what you want to generate. Passion is, is what is self-generated. You look at someone that is dying and something moves you. For example, there are some people, they can't stand blood. If they see blood, they will faint. Just blood. Whereas, there are some people like us that see blood, you're excited. Not for evil, but to help. Now, some people, they see blood in terms of, you know, accident, um, accident emergency. For example, I won't advise anybody to go to accident emergency ward if you know you cannot stand some, you know, issues. But there are some, in the midst of it, they are still bold and strong. Now, it shows that God give, gave them that passion to be able to address such situation. If everybody is running away from such, when your wife wants to deliver, who would you eat? So in the same way, God gives, you know, passion in order to solve some issues, I mean, situations. So look in what? What do I have passion for? What do I do with passion? Think about it. The Bible speaking book of, the Bible speaking book of um, Matthew chapter 14 verse 14. And Jesus went forth and saw great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them. And he healed their sick. Can I say something here? Passion will always provoke release of power. When you are passionate, passion connects you with the source. 
Nobody has, has, I mean, has passion on his own. Passion is an extension of God's, I mean, God's intention in you. So when you have passion, you connect to God's power to deliver the answer. That's why, if you look at it, when you have passion to help, God supply the need. When you have passion to help, God supply the resources. When you have passion to send some people to school, God supply the money. When you have passion to rescue some people from issues, God supply the because you see, passion connects you to God's power, and invariably it delivers the answer. So, look at what. What do I have passion for? You have passion for hairdressing. You have passion for sewing. You have passion for office work. There are some people, they don't like office work for any reason. Let them go to office. They will sack them at last. Because they will make one mistake or the other. One mistake, one mistake. Until they say, just go, 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 go. If you have passion for business, what are you doing in an office? If you have passion for office, what are you doing in the business? Locate your passion. And you discover your portion. In destiny. Glory to God. Number three. I'd like you to know that challenging times are seasons of discovery. The times of challenges are moments to discover among others your talent, your gift. You know the reason? The challenges God allows to come your way as a believer they are stepping stones to your championship in life. Look at Joseph. The journey of Joseph was from pit to prison. I mean, from pit to Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house to prison. From prison to palace. From palace to a prime minister. But look at that journey. It might not make much sense, but God was preparing him for the top. So, when you look at the challenges of your life as a believer, Knowing fully well that Romans 8 28 says, All things work together for your ultimate good. Why? It says, Jeremiah 29, verse 18. He said, The thought that towards you is a thought of good, not of evil, to give you an expected end, to give you a future. So, when you, I mean, verse 11, when you understand that what you are going through, because some look at their challenges and they feel sorry for themselves. Whereas, some look at their challenges and get excited. If the devil had known <laughs> that it would end up like that for Jesus, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. In the same way, if they had known that you are going forward with that challenge, they wouldn't try it. Every challenge that comes away as a believer is to strengthen you for the future. So, in the midst of challenges, look inward. What am I to learn from this? What am I to discover from this? You go this way, they hate you. You go that way, they hate you. You go this way, they hate you. Now, learn what hatred blesses with. <laughs> learn what it means to work with people that are challenging. Those were things that jo Joseph was learning and learning and learning. He learned, he learned how to be in the prison. I mean, how to be inside the pit. He learned how to serve as a slave. So that when he became a prime minister, he can know how to manage slaves. He learned how to be a servant. So that when he became a prime minister, he can know what servants go through. He learned how to be, you know, how to manage people in an office. And gradually, gradually, put everything together, he became a prime minister. What a major CV of life. So the challenges you are going through, they are, you, don't, you think about it. When they talk about some issues of life, you have gone through all. Then you are the best to teach someone else. You are the best to help someone else. You may look at it, my past is so bad, but your past is somebody's blessing. Because when you talk, they sit to listen. So I like you to know, the challenges you're going through, they are, they, are, they, are, they are pathways to discovering what you carry. And let me say this, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He said, God would not allow you to go through a temptation that is beyond you. So every temptation that has come your way, he said, in the midst of it all, you will make a way of escape. So the challenges that came your way, they are basically to mold you for the future ahead of you. But what do you do in the process? Take notes. 
in the process, make lessons. In the process, write books. In the process, discover. In the process, sit down and make some plans. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Number four or number five, whatever the case is. What you do with ease, with no difficulty, is a pointer to what God has planted in you for your destiny. What you do with ease, no difficulty. What you do with ease, for example now, think about it. Some people are struggling to do medicine and surgery, by all means. I must be a doctor. I must be a doctor. And you are failing microbiology. You are failing biochemistry. I must be a doctor. You are failing physiology. I must be a doctor. When will you leave that place? <laughs> Is it by force? Is it only through mercy you become a doctor? <laughs> now, check looking what? Don't struggle to study a course. Yes, I'm not saying we should not study. But you see, to labor and struggle, there are different things. When you are laboring, it doesn't mean you are struggling. To labor, to struggle, they are different. To labor means to engage in order to see a result. To see results. To struggle means to, by all means, get it done. Whether easy or not easy. So, i like you to know, when you are on the path of destiny, when you are on the path of endowment, divine endowment does not make you struggle. Yes, it may require hard labor. It may require major engagement, but it will not end up in struggle. Glory to God. So look at what. What are the things you do with ease? No difficulty. What are the things you do without any struggle at all? Think about it. You like talking so much. Channel it to go and learn journal journalism. It's not a sin. It's a gift. There are some people you now, if you put them here now, from morning to evening, you will hear, okay, is it talk now? Go now. Now, that's there. Is, you, you can't fight it. What else? Some people will sit there here <laughs> in 30 seconds. Come now. If you, if you don't talk, they'll make you talk. It's the grace of God. But you see, don't see at minus. Channel it for your own lifting. Can I say something here? Your gift is your lift to your destiny. If you don't discover it, you may remain there forever. Your gift is your lift to your destiny. Your gift is your lift to your destiny. Your gift is your lift to your destiny. So you must locate it. If you must locate destiny. Your gift is an elevator. It takes you from the, where you are to where you ought to be. And the more you trade it, the higher you go. The more you trade it, the higher you go. So look inward for what God has planted inside. Look inward. Because you see, God will not recreate you. At creation, he said, before I formed thee, I knew thee. And I have ordained thee, Jeremiah 1, 5. So, there's a preordination which has a conclusion at creation. But your discovery is what enhances the realization. Romans 8, 29 to 32. For those whom he foreknew, he predestined. Them, he also called. The make God is justified. Those he justified, he glorified. So ultimately, at creation, he ended his own assignment. So coming to the world, you have to discover it. The Lord will help us to discover in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's why after we have found it, we must go all out to make the most of it. Look at the 19, verse 17 to 30, 20. And he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou art been faithful in very little, have thou authority over ten cities? And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pounds have gained five pounds. And he said likewise, be thou also over five cities. And another came and saying, Lord, behold, there is a, here is thy pound, which I have kept and laid up in my napkin. May you not bury your destiny in a napkin. You see, this is very important. Why you are trying to locate it? What are you doing where you are working? That's where it comes in. You see, he that is not faithful in that which is other, another man's business, who commit into his hands the one that belongs to him. 
Anywhere you find yourself, put in your best. Serve. That was what the who said that I read on Sunday. The who said, I was working as if it's my own business. I took it as personal. When you try to play smart on your employer, you are playing smart against your future. Take it or leave it. It's a seed you are sowing. Play smart on your employer. Manipulating things. is playing smart against your future. Employer may not see it, but the creator sees it. Colossians 3.23 Whatsoever you do, do it as if it's unto the Lord. So, if you are not, if you are not doing it the way God wants it, God will not place your own in your hand. That's why be conscious of the way you deal with the little God has placed in your hand. Serve without supervision. The little that, because you see, see as that a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings and not before mean men. Don't try to work under supervision. Be self-supervised. Make sure that you can tell God, Lord, you know I'm faithful in this little. Place me where, where I ought to be. You know I'm doing my best in this little. Cause me to experience and inherit my portion in the land of the living. That is what enhances destiny. God is not a magomago mago person. God does not manipulate. You can't bribe God. What you sow is what you reap. So, why you are still waiting for discovery? Wherever you find yourself, put in your best. Serve as if God is watching. Walk as if God is paying. Walk as if only God will pay you. That is how to see breakthrough. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Therefore, we are talented essentially for profitable living. We are all talented essentially for profitable living. Proverbs 18, verse 16. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. A man's gift. A man's gift. A man's gift. You know what? Anyway, you find yourself, do it as if that is your last. I remember when I was working in an hospital. And um, some of the other lab guys, when they're on their on call, they lock their, because we're staying in the hospital, they will lock their room. They will knock, the nurses will knock, knock, they'll come out now, they won't open. When I hear, I open, I'll go and do their call. Do the, and imagine, some people are just heartless. Somebody has accidents, they are calling you. Ha! Ah, very, very, some people are so wicked. And you are supposed to be on duty. And they knock, 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 knock. You open. When I hear it, I go out and do it. God was counting. God was recording. You see, don't behave as if um, for the fact that somebody is supposed to do something and, not, and he's not doing it. Your doing it does not make you foolish. It makes you wise. I see my job. Should I do it? Uh -uh. Remember God is the rewarder. Whether it's any organization you find yourself. But you see, I was doing it. By the time I finished it, in that office, they didn't want me to go. Because a diligent hand shall be a rule. I like us to understand every opportunity to serve is opportunity to secure future. Every opportunity to serve is opportunity to secure future. Because everything that comes your way is a stepping stone to your next phase. How you step determines if you step higher. How you take it determines if the future will open up. It's an opportunity to see opportunity to serve. Glory to God. So, like I said, every time you are face to face with opportunities, especially to serve, release your totality. Release all that you have. Give it all it takes. Know it fully well. The God who is a rewarder of those who diligently seek and serve is always recording. Let's be on our feet tonight. And tell God, Lord, Help me to discover my divine endowment. Help me to discover my divine endowment. Lord, help me to discover my divine endowment that I may be able to be fruitful in my assignment. Help me to discover my divine endowment, Lord. And if you have known it, Lord, help me to trade with it. Help me to make the most of it. Help me to engage profitably. Help me to engage profitably. Help me to engage profitably. 
Il libre los bleli de Liboja. Resquedo, resquedo, carosie le bodia. Yes, que tise bleli de bleli de Razego. Razego, si le bodia les a. Rese, 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 rese. Agagara, gada la 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 Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Tonight, this communion will open our eyes. Will open our minds to discover our endowments. Not only that, but to trade with our endowments and to be profitable in it in the name of Jesus Christ. Before we close tonight, before we take of the communion, partake of the communion, you are here tonight, you are not yet saved. Remember, the Spirit of God can only lead you when there is a connecting factor. A magnet cannot attract a wood. A magnet can only attract a metal. No matter how heavy your destiny and it wants to pass across to you, if you are not saved, it can't catch it. No matter how heavy the magnet is, if it's a wood, no matter how small the wood is, they can't carry it. Heavy magnet cannot carry a small wood. It only takes even small magnets to carry a small, a, a big metal. What does it mean? No matter how huge your destiny is in Christ, until you are saved, you don't have a right to assess it. Therefore, tonight you are here, you are not saved. I'd like to pray with you just one minute. Quickly, for heaven to repackage your life. To put you on the roster of those who are to make it in destiny in Christ. Because until Christ has have access into your life, you can't enjoy the shining that Christ brought for his people. So therefore, you're here tonight. I'd like to pray with you. You, are not, you know you're not saved. And you really want to be saved. You've been hearing it time and again. But you really want Jesus tonight. Lift up your right hand and I'll pray with you. Remember, you can't take communion on a system that has not accepted Jesus. You're here. I'd like to pray with you. Lift up your right hand. You want to be saved? tonight, you want to give Jesus the opportunity to rule your life in order not to ruin your life by yourself. Remember, if you rule your life by yourself, you don't know tomorrow. But the Alpha and Omega, when he rules your life for you, tomorrow is sure. There is hope. There is future. Quickly tonight, you are here. You want to be saved. Raise up your hand. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, sir. Please, if you want to be saved, just step forward. Remember, it's unto God, not unto man. You are coming to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. It is not just for a routine. It is something that must be done to reassess your place in destiny. I'd like you to be saved tonight. I'd like mercy to, to recognize you tonight. You only be saved. Your brother, your sister. No matter what you're doing, allow Jesus tonight. Allow Jesus tonight. Allow Jesus tonight. Your heart is being pricked. Something is touching you that my son let me help you my daughter let me help you don't resist the call of god don't resist the opportunity don't resist the opportunity you are sitting here you're looking at me maybe you're at the gallery you're at the extension you're at the overflow you really want jesus in your life and your heart is indicting that i need to go out you're not coming to me you're coming to your maker and the maker is the molder when he molds he remains molded forever so therefore, if you are still there looking at me, joining these my brothers and sisters, I'd like to step forward and let his grace be released upon you tonight. While I pray for them, I'd like every person to lift up their voice and say, Father, tonight this communion will usher me into discovery, will usher me into fulfillment, will usher me into a new beginning. Lift up your voice and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Those in the front, take your right hand on your chest and close your eyes. And say after me, say, Jesus, say, Jesus, forgive me my sins. Wash me clean with your blood. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. It's a new day. It's a new beginning for me. Amen and amen. Lord, I pray for your sons and daughters that you have saved tonight. May your grace be sufficient for them. May your hand rest upon them. May they not return back to your vomit anymore. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Saints, please go to